Our Bagole today have been a very good example of this for us for 50 years now. As a country, our need for their adult supervision is not a thing of the past. While they have both nurtured and guided us through storm and tempest, today as ever, we still run to them in difficult times. During the COVID pandemic, many of you will remember, some of the people who are allowed on social media and who are disoriented and are perennial victims of foreign media like CNN and, and such, were always on the local news. They would religiously switch to UBC to watch the presidential address. So they were not taking public health advice from the Wazungu, they were taking it from their president. So like children, we are fiercely independent until danger strikes, then we run back to our parents. So on this 50th anniversary, I'd like to celebrate Muse and Mama and thank God for their lives. Jubilee in the Bible is a time for restoration. So Muse and Mama, we pray that God will keep you healthy and strong always. We pray that God will give you wisdom as you undertake these important tasks that he has entrusted to you. We pray that God will protect your union always that we may continue to have our center of gravity undisturbed. The theme of Mze and Mama's Golden Jubilee celebration is taken from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 12. Ebenezer, thus far the Lord has helped us. This scripture is particularly poignant for us because 50 years ago, when Muse and Mama got married at the little church on Turnham Green in London, they didn't have a big wedding, as many young people do today. They were not surrounded by their parents, their family, and friends from both the bride and groom's side. They got married in the UK because their lives, their very lives, were under threat, and it wasn't safe for them to be in Uganda, much less get married here. But today, on their Golden Jubilee celebration. They are in Ntungamo, their ancestral home, and the origin of both their families, surrounded by children, grandchildren, relatives, friends, hundreds of spiritual children, and thousands of well-wishers. When they got married 50 years ago, they didn't have a place to call home, nor did they have a stable job or secure income. Their first home was an apartment in Kurasini, Dar es Salaam, a sparsely furnished home. This day is a gift to us from God himself, our Father, that we may bless him with our hearts thanksgiving and praise him, for we have no story without the goodness of God. We cannot ignore the fact that there are now people in the world who have tried to redefine the family and who now fight to destroy the family as we know it, to, just, to justify their idea that men should marry men and women should marry women. There are also those who are called transgender and then those who are called queer. Therefore, please know that we really need to celebrate family as much as possible because it is a debate now in the world whether the human family is relevant anymore. There is an international non-profit organization called Family Watch International, co-founded and led by a lady called Sharon Slater who from time to time calls upon people to sign petitions for family beliefs, opposing papers they want to pass at the UN for the global community that are ant family. Sharon authored a book called 
stand for the family. In this book, she gives an account of the powerful forces mounted against the family and the efforts to, to undermine the traditional family. But I believe that, uh, as David said during his battle with Goliath, in quotes, all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not only save with a sword or a spear, for the battle belongs to the Lord. And he will give you into our hands. Therefore, likewise, end quote, therefore, likewise, I say that there is need now more than ever before to express our God-given values and stand for them at every opportunity without any apology. And leave the rest to God, for I believe this truly is a battle to the Lord, and he alone will decide it. And so I realized that it's a blessing to have your spouse and give him peace, just let him be. What he wants to do, let him do, because it's nothing. And now I know that really, and he knows, I don't follow him picking up things and saying uh, small things. And <laughs> Ladies, just let your husbands be. And, you, and, and remember, the Bible tells us that we should not go to bed angry. Even if you misunderstand each other at any one point during the day, just make sure you don't go to bed angry. You apologize to your spouse, you go to bed happy, and you get up happy. You go to bed angry, you get up with a headache. So remember, those are some of the nuggets I can share with you after 50 long years. And I hope that you take them seriously. So please bear, bear in mind this. Those people who waste a lot of time trying to get shortcuts, to be corrupt, to get this, thinking that they are planning. Uh, my, my advice is you do God's work, God will do yours. That's really my advice. Now, secondly, my daughter recently, Natasha, when she was doing, she's doing that film she's doing, she asked me a question. Why could you not give up the, the, the fight? I told her that if I had given up the fight, I would have died from giving up because I would have been internally when you call it okwegaya, okwegaya, to despise oneself, to see things going bad and you keep quiet because you want an easy life. Because of the upbringing we had here, if I had done that, I would have died. I wouldn't be alive today. I would have died from stress and uh, uh, depression, maybe. I think that's what they call depression. So therefore, we had no alternative but to, 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 to if we were respecting ourselves, but to oppose uh, those, uh, those mistake makers. And yet, we, we needed to, to have a normal life like other people. That's where Mama Janet now comes in. And not only being a mother, but a mother of children with, an, with a, a permanently absentee husband. You, you heard what the children were saying, that she was tough with them and was able to bring them up for a number of years without my presence, and I really salute her for that. So her contribution to the upbringing has no comparison, because she did it when I was not there, and when 
they didn't even know that, that I would ever come back to, to their lives. At the church there, I told you about life and life supporting f f facilities. Again, I'm repeating that. The family is, is, is the life. Other things, wealth, what, what, are facilitations for, for life. Now here, in our groups here, we refer to marriage as, broadly speaking, as okombeka, ayombecheramaka, meaning you are building not just marrying a man and woman only, you, you also build a home. And okombeka means wife, children, but also wealth creation. That's what we, we, we refer to, 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 to as Okombeka. So therefore, I want to thank God for my family, for Mama Janet, for the children now that they have grown up, and for the grandchildren. I thank God for, for this.